Before Aaron Rodgers called Hub Arkish an absolute bum for his claim that he won't vote for Rodgers for MVP for reasons unrelated to football. He's a bum. Aaron Rodgers had a podcast appearance on Sirius XM with Adam Shine, and it sounds like the ice of the frozen tundra may be thawing a little Ooh. bit as it relates to Aaron Rodgers' attitudes toward the front office and specifically general manager Brian Gutekunst. Here's Rodgers from yesterday. Well, Adam, the grass is greener where you water it. I, I really, I really <laughs> believe that. And you know, that's an adage to dissuade people from going out and taking risks and chances. And uh, you know, I think that you know where you spend your time and energy and what you choose to water will always be the greenest part of your life. And I decided, you know, when I came back, that I was going to be all in with the team and all in to to see things move forward to a better place and that's what the conversations were about you know during the off season was about being a part of uh those conversations that impact my ability to do my job and and i you know from one of the first days brian and i sat down and got on the same page and it's been it's been a really nice fall and winter i appreciate uh you know uh his approach how it's been and it's been very meaningful to me so i'm thankful for for that relationship uh where it's at at this point and that's made uh you know made my life uh that much more enjoyable so i i, I gotta give brian um a lot of credit for uh you know for meeting me in the middle um look it's a far cry from aaron Rodgers reportedly wants brian gutekunst to be fired and the crickets from aaron Rodgers in response to that report that's what made it even more glaring to me when that report emerged from Charles Robinson of Yahoo in the aftermath of the draft when everything first hit the fan last April and into early May. He wants Goody Kunst out, and Rogers never said, no, I don't. Now they're talking about meeting in the middle. And hey, hey, Chris, we talked about this last week. As Aaron Rodgers gets closer and closer to the 2022 offseason, if he's thinking about leaving, the question is, where do you go where the deck is stacked in your favor? Where do you go that is going to be any better than where you currently are? And let me throw this other factor on top of it. Monday Night Football, the game that he participated in the Manning cast for in the fourth quarter. That love and that outpouring for Ben Roethlisberger, you leave Green Bay, you're never having that night. You're never having that moment. Roethlisberger went wire to wire with the Steelers and... I, I I think that it's setting up right now for Aaron Rodgers to go wire to wire with the Packers. I do too. I do too. I, uh, we've been saying this for a little while now, right? We kind of thought that the, the writing was on the wall. I think we both have made comments to where, like, if you made me bet at the end of the year, I'm going to say Aaron Rodgers is back with the Green Bay Packers. It just seemed that way. It seemed like, you know, he had men, mended the relationship between him and Gutenkus, and I don't know where it is with Mark Murphy, to the fact where he could at least live with it. And like you said, I think there's the real point. Everything else is a roll of the dice. Right now in Green Bay, you know, again, I don't know if you're going to win the Super Bowl, but you know you got a team that's going to be in that conversation. You do know that for sure. And, yeah, it's hard to go somewhere else and, you know, restart the magic and get everybody behind you and believing in you. There, there's a lot to do there. And we know Brady and, and Manning have done that. But also they weren't the MVPs of football two years in a row on the way out. He, he's regained some power here for two MVPs in a row, too, to where they're probably like, well, I think we might have to start watering this grass uh, of Rogers' grass here because, damn, if he leaves town, we're going to look extra foolish now for losing the two-time MVP as he walks out the door. You know, Manning, you know, he had the injury. They had the number one pick. Andrew Luck was there. They kind of, you know, he knew he had to leave. Brady, the writing was on the wall. They were done. They wanted to rebuild the team. They weren't going to make it all about him just to patch it together so he could have two or three more good years. They want to have something substantial in the future. So I think you said it right, and I do fully expect him to be back in Green Bay next year. Here's the key. We talked about this last week. Step one, and this is where Aaron Rodgers just sits back and waits because he's given them back-to-back -back MVP seasons. He's given them that performance at a salary that is well below where the market currently is. Yeah, hey, $33.5 million, that's a lot of money. The market is currently $45 million. So all he's got to do is this. 
Let's see what they do. Yeah, Let's yeah. Let's see what they show up with. Right. That's going to be the first move, the first step, the first inclination as to whether or not they want him. And he shouldn't have to do anything. He shouldn't have to get into any type of contentious negotiation where he's saying, I want this and I want that. All he's got to do is sit back and see what they do. And if they show him the appreciation that he's earned yeah. day in and day out, game in and game out, with the performances he's put on there, if they show him that, then he's got his answer. And if they don't, then he's got his answer. Yeah. So that may right. be part of it, too. You're right. That he's given them every opportunity to do the right thing if they want to keep him. Yes. If they want to keep him. Yes. But, you know, when it comes to meeting in the middle, as it relates to financial realities of this, for a publicly owned company that has no owner that is cramming profits into the pockets of his pants and buying a super yacht with it, that's the one big difference between all that money. Yeah. All that money just sits there. This guy's the most important, the most relevant, the most significant employee of the entire corporation, and now's the time for them to, to pay him accordingly. Yeah. And if they don't, so I, I amend my statement by saying that he will go wire to wire with the Green Bay Packers as long as the Packers wake the F up and pay this guy what he deserves. Yeah, right. Give him a little more money and give him a few more. A years. lot more money, a lot, not yeah. a little more. I wonder, I wonder more. how much more he'll ask for. I do, I do wonder that. You know, he doesn't ask. No, that's my point. No, you're right. They he doesn't know. ask. Or, hey, or maybe no, just like sign well, a listen. receiver in free agency. Do something hang like on, that. Hang on. <laughs> yeah. The, 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 there is nothing for him to ask for. That, that's what's important here. The market's been set. We know what it is. We don't have to. We don't have to get our hands dirty in this back and forth push and pull. The market's set. You want to keep him? You know what it is. It's out there. Everyone knows what it is. So you want to keep him? They, they know. Yeah. So he'll get his answer. Yeah, you're Th right. And that's the key. It's on them at this point. And if it falls apart, and this is where, you know, I, I think his PR approach at times leaves something to be desired, but I'll be his PR agent on this. If he wants out after this season, it's because the Packers failed to properly show him the appreciation based upon the performance, based upon the results, based upon everything he brings to the table and the value that he has going forward. It's that simple. If he wants out, it's because they failed to recognize it financially. And I'm not saying get every last dollar. He, should, if this is, he shouldn't have to pursue it. They know exactly what it should take, and they know exactly what they need to do to try to keep him around and keep him happy and keep him productive and maybe get a third straight MVP next year. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he's capable of that. I mean, come on. This is where I mean you're right. I mean you're 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 saying it right. It's all on them. I mean, he doesn't have to do anything else. There's no doubt. I mean, what were this is the greatest quarterback of all time? You know I think that. I'm, there's no way I'm coming off of it now. I mean he's the greatest quarterback I've ever seen in my life. There's no doubt. It's a team sport. Yeah, he hasn't won as many Super Bowls, but come on, I'll, I'll get back to it again. I mean, you're, people are crazy if they don't think that Aaron Rodgers on the New England Patriots would have won six Super Bowls. Like, are you kidding me? Come on, get out of here with that crap. He's got 83 touchdowns and nine interceptions the last two years. He is the MVP. He is playing football at an efficient level that we've really never seen in the sport, let alone – it's not efficiency just to be efficient and go, oh, I've thrown for 72%, and look, I made no it's, he still can throw 60-yard lasers with the best of them and does. You know, he's, he's, he's unbelievable the way he's playing right now. So you're right. He, needs to just, he should just sit back, and I don't think Green Bay you – know, I didn't think Green Bay was stupid enough to draft Jordan Love, but uh, hopefully they've learned their lesson here to where yeah, they're not stupid enough to not, you know, let this guy out the door when – like, the writing's on the wall. He's got at least two, three more years of high-level play, at least. I'm being conservative with that right there. And you just – you don't let that walk away. You, you make sure that stays there in your organization. Hey, and you know, you know what? If the end result is the Jordan Love pick was a bust and we're never going to get any value out of him and we're going to trade him for a fifth rounder that could become a third right. rounder or whatever. Fine. So what? Fine. Right. Not the first, it's not the first time right. a team pissed away a first round pick. Right. The Packers were the one team in 1989 that didn't take the future Hall of Famer in the top five. They took Tony Mandridge. They survived. Yeah. They won a Super Bowl seven years later. Right. So, so you do what you got to do. Yeah. They, they got a guy who has been one of the very best quarterbacks of all time. He's getting better with age. 
And why would you not ride that for as long as you possibly can? And, and part of the reality, and this gets back to Hub Arkish, he's yet to acknowledge that he was wrong. Somebody in that front office, whoever it was, whether it's Gutekunst or whether it's Mark Murphy, who may have been the puppet master and trying to set up these conflicts and in the hopes that it all erupts and explodes and results in victories and maybe a Super Bowl win. Somebody's got to recognize they, they, they you know, it worked because they've gotten great performance out of Aaron Rodgers. But yeah, now's the yeah. time if you want to keep him around. Right. You, you got You got to take care of him. Yeah. They, they, they have had a hell of a bargain. Thirty three and a half million. Aaron Rodgers makes that. Jared Goff makes that. <laughs> That's Insanity. <laughs> Insanity. The Green Bay Packers. <laughs> Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.